Okay, so now we want to study the output of an LTI system for an arbitrary input. That means we don't even know what the input looks like. So we are going to look at LTI uh, with the arbitrary input. Oops. So we're going to uh, do this in a little bit complicated way, so just bear with me as I go through it. So first, I'm going to uh, introduce some notation. And so the notation is uh, very simple. Uh, I don't want to keep using hx. Uh, so I'm just going to say uh, there is some function h. So we're going to have some function h. It has some input. Let's say scalar for now, xt. It leads to some output yt. And we'll just write it as xt leads to yt. And we understand that yt equals h of xt. Just uh, so we just, this is written in this way just because it's going to make our life a bit easier. And the second thing is, um, remember the delta function? This is the delta t. It's, it's, and if you remember that, that's basically, that's drawn in this way at zero. We have an impulse which is of width zero but has an area of one. So area equals one with uh, tens to zero. It's almost zero, and that's the Dirac delta function. And I want to introduce a new uh, uh, value, and I'm going to call that h of t. And h of t is defined as uh, h of t is the transfer function of delta of t. So basically, if you're going to give the system a delta impulse, what it comes out of it is h of t, which is also the impulse response. So this is called the impulse response. And this you should uh, very similar to this natural response that we saw earlier, except that now we're going to make it specific to the impulse response. OK, so we can write this in this way. Delta t leads to h of t. Okay, great. So uh, what we want to do now is we're going to try and uh, we're going to multiply both sides by x of t. So let's say the input is x t delta of t. Now, what we know is that delta t acts as a selector. It selects the value at x0. So the output is not xt ht, but in fact it's x0 ht, because really we don't, uh, delta t has no value, it, it is zero everywhere except at the origin. So this is going to lead to an output which corresponds only to the value of x0 given at that point in time. And it's going to be scaling that uh, uh, value over here uh, uh, by ht. So another way of thinking about it is that Delta T is giving you, uh, leads to X, HT. And when we multiply this way, we're only going to be scaling it up by the value X0. So it's as if the input XT was scaled by the scalar value X0 because of this. And that's why the output is X0 HT. Now, uh, what happens if we are going to time shift this? So we're going to do the same kind of a trick that we saw earlier. We we'll say that if we have the input delta of t minus tau, which is a time shifted value of delta, and we're going to multiply, if you're going to multiply that um, over the left hand side with x tau, then this is going to lead to x tau h of t minus tau. And this is because we are. Uh, we, we recognize that this value on the left is nothing more than xt delta t minus tau. Why? Because again, xt, uh, sorry, delta t minus tau is zero except when t equals tau. And so xt delta t minus tau is the same as x tau delta t minus tau. Because at all other values, uh, we're going to have, uh, the, this selector is going to 
ignore the value of xt. It only matters what happens at this particular instant of time. And so we get this equation over here, x star delta t minus star x star h, t minus star, because of the time invariance. Um, now, we know that xt can be written as this. xt can be written as by integrating all the slices of x together. So you can say that xt is given by integral minus infinity to infinity uh, x, x star delta t minus star d tau. So now we want to know what happens when we put this particular input xt into the system? What does it lead to? Well, we know that each of these individual slices, x star delta t minus star, which is what we have over here, leads to x star, uh, leads to x star h t minus star. So this is going to lead to, through linearity, minus infinity to infinity, uh, x star h t minus star t minus star d tau. Right, because uh, each of these individual bits over here is leading to so x star from from. Uh, if you just go back over here, you look at this one over here. X star delta t minus one input leads to x star h t minus star. So that is what we're doing over here. We're basically, integrating each of these things together, and then we make one observation, which is that this over here is just the convolution of x t convolved with h of t. Okay, great. So now we know something we didn't know before, which is that if the input is x t, then, uh, let me just write it out. So x, x of t, if the input leads to x t convolved with h t. So this beautiful result says that for an LTI system, if you know what the impulse response is, which is h t, then you can find out the response to any arbitrary input x t by simply convolving the input signal x t with the h t. And so that means we know how the LTI system is going to behave for arbitrary input. And so the problem here is that of this convolution. This convolution is hard to compute. You've got to compute this integral over here. And uh, this integral is uh, not that straightforward. You got to, uh, and, and, and so the whole purpose of transform domains essentially is to compute, is to convert this integral into a multiplication in the transform domain. Okay. So stepping back, just to so I think we have an LTI system which has some transfer function h, and it's given some input x t. And this is going to give you an output, which is xt convolved with ht, which is the impulse response. So let's set aside how do we find out what ht is for a moment. The problem is this thing is, is hard to compute. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to say we'll do it slightly differently. We know that if xt is represented as the sum of complex exponentials of the form k e to the k e to the st, then each of these complex exponentials is going to be transformed into fs by ki. And so we can just add all of these, and this is going to give us this output over here. So we're going to reduce this convolution into some kind of scaling and addition. So that's a multiplication I talked about earlier uh, of the components of xt. And that's sort of the heart of how the transform domains work. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to go and talk about the uh, Fourier transform and then the, uh, uh, the, Fourier, sorry, the, Fourier tran the Fourier transform and the F Fourier series, and then the Laplace transform. And then we'll come back to systems and using these transforms for studying systems when we get into control theory. So, so we'll, we'll dive directly into transforms next. <laughs>